Hello again and in this short module we are going to discuss about some of the notations that we will be using in the later modules of this course and uh, we are also going to formally define what we mean by a normal form game. Sometimes it is also called the strategic form game going to be used interchangeably to, uh, uh, to refer to this, these games. Uh, let me just uh, mention that uh, this is a representation technique of the games. So how do we represent a game in normal form? So we first define the set of players. So by n we define uh, n uh, different players and by si defining the set of the strategies for player i. We have already seen an example and we will also see another example very soon. And by the lower case of, uh, of SI, we will be denoting an element of SI, which is one specific strategy for player I. Now, the set of all strategy profiles, so if you put together all the strategies that the players can take, and what is the collective uh, strategy profile, that will be denoted by this S, which is the Cartesian product of all these uh, strategy sets. Now, what is a strategy profile? So, one specific strategy profile would be all the lower case, some instances picked from each of this set, a vector of all the strategies picked by all these players, and that is belonging to this set capital S. We will also use a very special notation, and this is possibly a very special notation for game theory, and we, uh, of course, use it uh, many times. So it means that, uh, uh, so this the notation is S of uh, minus i and it means that the strategy profile without uh, agent i, a player i. So uh, it, it is uh, listing all S1 to S i minus 1 and except S i, it is going, is jumping over to S i plus 1 until S of n. Right, so this is in some sense uh, very succinctly representing uh, what is the strategy profile that has been picked by all the other agents except agent I. The third important piece is the, the utility. So utility is actually taking the, the strategy profile. So once all the players have picked their strategies, it gives you a specific strategy profile and the utility is mapping uh, that to a real number. So notice that this utility is different for different agents. So this is the utility function for the player i. So normal form game representation is typically given by this tuple, where the first uh, entry is the, the set of players. The second entry is the set of all strategies, strategy sets for all the players. And the last one are the utilities for all these players. So this tuple will uh, succinctly represent one normal form game. So whenever you are representing some game, whenever you are talking about a game, uh, you should be able to give all these uh, specifications of that game. That is what is uh, what this formalism do. Now, uh, if SI is finite, uh, so we know that the so in this description the the set of players is already finite. Uh, if SI is also finite, then this is called a finite game. And we'll see that there are certain uh, uh, things that we can actually say about finite games, which we cannot say in the uh, context of infinite games. So let us look at a very simple example of, of a game. And this is a, a, a very uh, usual penalty kick game. Uh, so suppose there are, so it's uh, the context is uh, football, of course, and you have a shooter who is shooting uh, to, the, uh, to the net and the goalkeeper is trying to save it. Now suppose the shooter has three options, either it can shoot on the left, in the center or on the right and similarly goalkeeper can also dive on the left, stay at the center or dive on the right. Now very clearly uh, if the shooter shoots to the left and goalkeeper also jumps to the left, then the goalkeeper is capable, so that's the assumption that the goalkeeper is saving the goal. In that case the shooter gets uh, a negative payoff. So uh, the shooter actually missed the goal and the goalkeeper is actually getting one because uh, it has actually saved that goal. Similarly, you can see that whenever uh, shooter is shooting on the left and uh, the goalkeeper is not diving on, on left, then the goal is scored and the shooter gets one and the goalkeeper gets minus one. Similarly, for the other places, uh, so the diagonals have all this uh, minus one, one entries and the non-diagonal elements are all 1 minus 1. 
So in the in the usual notation that we have just developed, the set of players is given by n, which is one and two in this case. Both their strategy sets consist of the same set of actions. This is just a coincidence. It's a very simple game, but uh, in general the, the strategy sets could be different. And the utilities are given as follows. Uh, you have this utility of L and L. So when both these things are L, uh, for player 1 it is minus 1. And uh, when L and C and for L and R the utilities are 1 respectively. Now similarly you can also consider the, the, the other player's utility. For player 2, L and L is 1 and for the other 2 it is minus 1. So it is actually uh, taking care of the first row but uh, you can just finish the finish the rest of the things what is u1 of c comma l and c comma c and so on you know that 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 is for player one it is going to be these numbers and for player two it, this is going to be these numbers okay, so you can finish this up so now the game theory uh, uses two very important uh, assumptions that we have already discussed in the in one of the previous modules uh, so it is uh, so the first assumption is of rationality. What does it mean? It means that a player is rational if she picks the action to maximize her utility. So uh, in this uh, in this example of this game, the shooter and the goalkeeper always tries to pick the action that maximizes their utility. That is what rationality means. Intelligence, on the other hand, is a little uh, circular in its definition. It says that a player is intelligent if she knows that the rules of the game perfectly and picks actions considering that there are other rational and intelligent players so this is uh, this is the uh, very interesting uh, definition um, as we'll see more uh, examples we'll see that the implication of intelligence means that people will actually behave in the way a game theorist will analyze the game so that is the that is the uh, implication of these two results uh, of these two assumptions. Let us now move into another uh, very interesting definition which is that of common knowledge. Now the, the definition goes as follows and uh, uh, let me just say that first and then we will discuss it with an example. So we will call a fact to be a common knowledge if all the players know that fact. All players know that all the other players also know that fact. All players know that the all other players know that all the other players know that fact and it will continue forever um, even though it sounds a little funny uh, it has a very deep implication let me show you one example so suppose uh, take this example of an isolated island uh, and there are three blue-eyed people so eye color can be either blue or black so these are the uh, two things that we can uh, we are assuming here and suppose there does not exist any re reflecting medium in that island and nobody talks uh, to each other about the eye color. So that, let's make that assumption. They, they will only observe other people's eyes so they can uh, watch other people's eye colors but they cannot see their own eye color. Now suppose one day a sage comes to this island and says that blue-eyed people are bad for the island and they must leave. There is at least one blue-eyed person in this island. Now, by assumption, the sage is a person who cannot be disputed. He is something uh, who, who is like an oracle. Whenever, you are, uh, whenever he says something, it, is, it must be the truth. Um, then, the, because he cannot be disputed, now if someone realizes that uh, his or her eye color is blue, then he or she will leave the island at the end of the day. That is the assumption. So, this is the second. Now maybe you can pause the video and think about uh, a little bit what will happen. So uh, what will the the implication of their understanding and their observations will uh, will, uh, will make them do? Uh, will they all leave on the first day? Will they leave on the second day? Or they might not be able to uh, figure out uh, their eye color forever. What what is going to happen? Let me give you the answer. So how so this is exactly how the common knowledge will populate. So let's think uh, in uh, three different uh, modules. So if there was only one blue-eyed person, and uh, the sage has said the thing that he has said, then he would see that the other two people are black-eyed. 
then he will immediately know because sage is always correct that his own uh, eye color is blue so at end of day one he should leave if there were two people then each of, each one of them will see that uh, the other two people are having one uh, black eye and one blue eye so uh, because the sage has said that uh, there exists at least one then he might still be uh, positive so he still might think that he his uh, own eye color is not blue uh, so maybe this is the person the blue eyed person is the only person so let's wait for his uh, his move and this is actually an implication of the common knowledge because he also assumes that the other person is also uh, using the same argument same uh, uh, deduction technique uh, so after day uh, on day two when he sees that the, the blue-eyed person, the other blue-eyed person did not leave uh, because if he was the only one blue-eyed person, then he would have lived and, uh, left the island at the end of day one. Uh, so he also understands that his eye color is also blue. Therefore, both these two persons will leave simultaneously uh, after day, day two. And uh, the black-eyed person initially saw both these two blue-eyed people and uh, in day three, when he sees that uh, both the people, both these two people are gone, he understands that his eye color was black and he will not leave. So that's the implication of common knowledge. And with this argument, you can clearly see what will happen for these three people, the original example that we started with. Uh, so both this, uh, both the three, uh, all the three people will actually uh, leave the island on day three, because uh, on day three, all of them will again appear and uh, then they will deduce that all these three people had blue eyes and they will all be blind. So, so that's, that's the implication of common knowledge. So even though uh, the statement of common knowledge looks a little funny, now you can realize what it means. And uh, if you go over this uh, example once again, and then you will realize that yes, this is, uh, this is a, a really a nice example. Now the, the assumption that we are going to make in, uh, in all of uh, this course is that the fact that all the players are rational and intelligent is a common knowledge. So everybody knows it, everybody knows that everybody knows it, and everybody knows that everybody knows that everybody knows it, and so on.